Islamic Spain, El Andalus. You've heard of it, when Muslims, Christians, and Jews all held hands and sang kumbaya as they celebrated their religious differences. Well, not exactly. The complex history of El Andalus will have to be for a different video. In this one, I'll provide you a bit of historical context, but I'm going to focus on how the Arabic language changed Spanish, and I'll show you the most commonly used Spanish words today that came from Arabic. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. Vaise mi corazón de mimb. All right, I won't act out the whole thing, and I don't have a sponsor. But what if I told you that this 12th century poem was an early form of Spanish that was actually written using the Arabic script, and that Spanish had become so Arabized that the words for lord and friend were not señor and amigo, but rab and habib. If this tickles your fancy parts, stick around. Spanish is a romance language, which means it's sexy when somebody whispers it in your ear. Te toca lavar los platos, cabrón. Oh. And also that it evolved from Latin, the language of the Roman Empire that ruled the Iberian Peninsula for six centuries, and called it Hispania, which is why it's called España today. And though Germanic kingdoms like the Visigoths and the Vandals conquered Hispania in the 5th century, these groups had already been Romanized, and they spoke vulgar Latin. Which sounds kind of dirty, but it just means Latin for the common uneducated folk. Which was pretty much everybody back then. In fact, it was the different kinds of vulgar Latin spoken by people around Europe that would eventually evolve into modern Romance languages like Italian, French, and Spanish. Today, we're concerned with the vulgar Latin variety spoken on the Iberian Peninsula in the 8th century. And to help us distinguish this variety, historians and linguists got together and decided to call it Romance. Just Romance. Because nobody will confuse that with the other Romance languages. In the year 711, a Muslim army from North Africa invaded Hispania, and within a few years had conquered nearly the entire peninsula, and subjugated its Romance-speaking population. I wasn't there for this romantic conquest but I have a feeling it went down like this. The Moors are out conquesting and see a group of vandals guarding a city in Hispania. So they roll up and ask, Assalamu alaikum, ma ismu hadihi al-ard. The vandals are like, what the hell language is that? But one of them thinks, well, maybe he's asking who we are. So he responds, Vandalus sum. The Moors have no idea what he said, but they did hear, Andalus. And thus, a legend was born. And also, the vandals got their name vandalized. There's debate over the origins of the name Al-Andalus, but one theory suggests it means the Vandals. And I like that one. Wherever it came from, Al-Andalus gave birth to the name Andalusia, the modern region in southern Spain famous for flamenco and an impossible to understand Spanish accent. The Muslim conquerors, known as the Moors, would rule over Al-Andalus for the next eight centuries and leave their mark on the language that we can still hear today when a Spanish speaker orders a taza de café con azúcar. Until Elon Musk or another one of these megalomaniac assholes builds a time machine, we don't perfectly understand the process by which Arabic words entered Romance and became permanent fixtures. But the 4,000 words of Arabic origin still used in Spanish today are a living monument to the highly unique cultural, social, and linguistic dynamics of El Andalus under Muslim rule. The labyrinthine history of El Andalus stretches almost eight centuries, in which borders, military allegiance, and people's religious adherence jumped around and switched sides like frenetic ballroom dancers. So you'll forgive me for simplifying and compressing the history so I can focus on the linguistic phenomena, and also so you don't have to read the whole history yourself. Oh, this could be an ad for Spark Notes. Speaking of history, Al-Andalus was a uniquely progressive place for its time, but it wasn't an interfaith paradise. Some would say it was complicated. And it was precisely because of some of these complications that the Romance language survived for centuries in the midst of an Arabic-dominant society. First, the majority of the Moors who invaded and conquered the Iberian Peninsula were not Arabs, but Berbers, an ethnic group from North Africa who spoke their own languages. Arabic, therefore, was initially the language of a prestigious minority of mostly Arab and Berber elite. And second, though pagans were offered the choice of conversion to Islam or death, Christians and Jews were protected under Islamic law as people of the covenant, or Allah Dhimma, and were not forced to convert to Islam nor required to learn Arabic. And finally, women played an important, though unfortunate role in preserving romance. The language. What I'm about to tell you isn't very romantic. As was common practice at this time, conquered women were often taken as slaves and concubines, 
while daughters from prominent families were given as wives to powerful and wealthy political rivals, who in this case would have been more men. Men who were Moors, not Mormon. Though Mormons also had multiple wives. Since women were not allowed to get an education in Al-Andalus, they didn't learn Arabic, and so they only spoke their native Romance language at home and to their children. In other words, a lot of Arabic-speaking Moors had children who grew up speaking Romance in La Casa, con Mama. And you wondered why it was called a mother tongue. But curiously, women were allowed to speak Romance in court to defend themselves. So judicial officials in Al-Andalus had to be bilingual in both Romance and Arabic. In fact, Arabic Romance bilingualism became quite common, at least for a part of the history of Al-Andalus. And Muslim rulers entrusted important government positions to Christians and Jews fluent in Arabic. So you see, other than enslaving each other's wives and committing the occasional massacre, they were kind of sweet to each other. All right, let's get to the meat of this video the words in modern Spanish that came from Arabic, and how they got there. The specific linguistic influence that Arabic exerted on romance was not simply the result of bilingual people mixing tongues. Ah. The Arabic words that entered romance were linked to specific industries for which Arabic was the avant-garde language. Avant-garde. I can do a video on how French influenced English. The Moors brought to Hispania new technologies, agricultural expertise, and a voracious appetite for translating scholarly texts that they would eventually house in by far the biggest library of medieval Europe, which they built in Cordoba. As a result, the Arabic relics we see in Spanish today often fit into logical categories. The Romans had built basic irrigation systems in Hispania, but the Moors improved and expanded these systems so they could grow all kinds of new crops they introduced from the East. And just like English today adopts foreign words for novel concepts, like paparazzi or feng shui, the new irrigation techniques and foods in El Andalus needed new vocabulary, and this was provided by Arabic. So Spanish has Arabic terms for agricultural products like algodón, cotton, from alcotón, aceite, oil, from azeite, arroz, rice, from arroz, azúcar, sugar, from azúcar, without which, Celia Cruz would have had nothing to randomly yell in the middle of her songs. Azúcar. Spanish has kept Arabic words for fruits, like sandía, watermelon, from sindilla, limón, lemon, from leymun, albaricoque, apricot, from albaricoque. Albaricoque. Sounds like a question word all on its own, doesn't it? Albaricoque? Is that racist? Irrigation terms that Spanish has inherited from Arabic include acequia, irrigation canal, from acequia, alberca, irrigation reservoir, or pool, from albirca, alcantarilla, sewer, from alcantara. Gardening had not been a part of the culture in Hispania under Roman or Visigothic rule but was considered almost a form of art in Arab culture. The Arabs brought with them new plant varieties, as well as novel designs and materials they used to create breathtaking gardens, reminiscent of a thousand and one nights. And that's why Spanish has Arabic flower names, like Azucena, white lily, from Susana, Azahar, orange blossom, from Azahar, Hasmin, jasmine, from Yasmin, or architectural design words like azulejo, tile, from azlij, adobe, adobe, from atoba, alcazar, palace, from alcazar. Arabic was the official language of government and trade in Al-Andalus, so it's no wonder that many words related to these important functions entered Romance vernacular. Alcalde, mayor, from alcadi, Aduana, customs, from Adiwan. Almacen, warehouse, from Almachzen. Tarifa, fair, from Tarifa. Alquiler, rent, from Alquire. Persians taught the game of chess to the Arabs, who then introduced the game to Al Andalus. Many Persian chess terms became Arabized before they made it into Spanish. And you'll also know that some of the original Persian terminology made it into English as well. Ajedrez, chess, from ashatronj. Hakemate, checkmate, from
from Shehmet, Alfil, Bishop, from Alfil, Roque, Rook, from Arroj. Early linguists thought that Roque was where rock and roll comes from. They were wrong. Long before the Gypsy Kings sang Volare, Al-Andalus was famous for its musical prowess, and this was largely due to the Arabs who brought rhythms and instruments, like the tambour, drum, from tobol, laoud, lute, from al which possibly developed into the modern guitarra, guitar, from kithara. The long linguistic cohabitation of Romance and Arabic left its mark on domestic life as well. So Spanish has words like alfombra, carpet, from alhanban, harra, pitcher, from jurra, which is where the English jar comes from, tasa, mug, from tasa, alcoba, bedroom, from alqubba, almohada, pillow, from almahda. So I guess we know what language they were using in the bedroom for pillow talk. Pillow. Speaking of things getting spicy, Spanish also has Arabic words for spices and herbs. Asafran, saffron, from zafran. Albaca, basil, from alhubok. Alusema, lavender, from alhizema. And though Al-Andalus was a remarkable place with periods of peaceful and cooperative convivencia, it was born out of violent religious conquest and ultimately crumbled because of relentless expansionist ambitions and endless wars for plunder. And today we see the evidence of this war frenzied society in Spanish military terms like Alferes, second lieutenant, from Alferis, Almirante, admiral, from Amir, Rehen, hostage, from Rihan. We also see territorial words like aldea, village, from Oddeya, barrio, neighborhood, from Barri. Perhaps the most significant impact the Moors had on the culture of El Andalus and eventually all of Europe is evidenced in Spanish words in the fields of philosophy, astronomy, math, and medicine. The rulers of El Andalus, especially in the 9th and 10th centuries, were great patrons of scholarship and funded massive translation efforts of ancient Greek thinkers like Aristotle, Plato, and Ptolemy. And this gave Spanish, via Greek, words like philosophia and geografia. But one of the great ironies of history is that by translating classic treatises by secular thinkers like Aristotle, the Muslim rulers of Al-Andalus introduced to Europe the seeds of reason-based thinking and doubt that would germinate into intellectual revolutions against religious dogma centuries later. This is why history is so interesting. Let's look at some words in these fields. Spanish adopted math terms like algebra, algebra, from algebra, cifra, number, from cifr, algoritmo, algorithm, from algorismi, as well as chemistry terms like azoge, mercury, from azog, alquimia, alchemy, from alquimia which eventually became química, chemistry, when people stopped trying to turn metals into gold and started doing real science, which turned out to be worth a lot more than gold. Thanks, Big Pharma. On that note, Spanish got medical terms from Arabic, like jarabe, syrup, from sharab, elixir, elixir, from elixir, and the most important of all, alcohol, alcohol, from alcohol. That's right. Alcohol was given to us by a people whose holy book forbids its consumption. Irony really is the hot sauce of history. Okay, let's jump back on a timeline and wrap this video up. By the mid 800s, about 150 years after the Moors had conquered Al-Andalus, the native Christian population had become so Arabized in their dress and their dominion of the Arabic language that they were called Mozarabs from Wustarab, meaning people who imitate Arabs. And the Romance language they spoke had become so Arabized that it was often written using the Arabic script, as you saw in the poem in the intro, and it was called Mozarabic. So if I were to summarize this whole process in a long, awkward sentence, it'd go like this. The native language of the Iberian Peninsula in the 8th century was a vulgar Latin variety called Romance, 
Then the Moors arrived and stayed for eight centuries, during which time Romance became so Arabized, it was eventually called Mozarabic. It eventually evolved into Spanish, and that's why there's so much Arabic in modern Spanish. Simple and succinct, and everyone's thankful for the summary. Except that's not what happened. Modern Spanish didn't evolve from Mozarabic. It was a different dialect from the northern kingdom of Castile that would evolve into modern Spanish. And that's why Spaniards today call their language Castellano, or Castilian. Ah, and that's called catfishing. Nah, it's just a cliffhanger for part two.